All right, we are here at California. It's Santa Clara, the ID Tech X 2019. We are not lost in space. This is a feature talking about the use of our inks in some uh, spacesuit evaluations happening with one of our customers here at uh, the Human Space Flight Laboratory at the University of North Dakota. This is a fun application, but it really speaks to the kind of versatility and innovation that's happening with our Inks products. Uh, so this is a fun thing that we're featuring here in uh, uh, California. So where does your ink go in there? Uh, so what's been done is our inks have been used in a lattice underneath the skin here to serve as uh, puncture detection and uh, impact strikes. So that will give the, uh, the astronaut and also the, uh, the uh, uh, station crews and, and ground crews uh, indications of the, the health of the astronaut in space. And so uh, uh, astronaut uh, debris strikes and meteor strikes are, are a real concern, particularly with increased uh, uh, dust and, and, and uh, uh, orbital debris in, in space. And so this is a fun project that uh, uh, we've been able to, to support through providing inks. But really, as we go around, uh, <clears throat> we're featuring not just the inks, but also our PulseForge tools. <clears throat> so we launched a couple of years ago the uh, PulseForge Invent, which is fully featured even at a, a, a low starting price. Uh, but what we've done this year is augmented the applications, and we're talking now about soldering. And so using the PulseForge tools to actually solder uh, surface mount components onto low temperature flexible substrates. And so in this case, uh, on the video, these are screen printed uh, solders, standard off the shelf solders. We can apply a, a selective exposure mask as necessary. Not every application of, of soldering will require that. But a specially configured uh, tool with an additional a uh, set of power supplies is able to deliver the high energy that's needed uh, still on the short time cycles to melt the solder, attach the surface mount components to the solder, <coughs> uh, to the substrate, uh, meeting the, uh, the test standards and performance standards required of the solder, but doing this on low temperature flexible substrates. So when we think about flexible and hybrid electronics and we think about wearables and foldable electronics and this kind of a thing, the need to, to combine the performance of traditional technologies with sort of this flexibility and, and bendability of, of the flexible substrates has necessitated the need for solder technologies uh, that can use accepted industry solders, but on these low temperature substrates. And it turns out that the PulseForge tools are absolutely able to do that. So we have some exciting projects happening with that. Because there's a lot of soldering going on in technology, right? But the, well, how much of this critical. can you affect? Yeah, all of the electronics that we have are based on soldering. Uh, alternatives that have been used for the low temperature applications included some adhesives, uh, there's been some work on low temperature soldering, uh, but each of those options has certain non-desirable attributes including uh, brittleness, in some cases lack of conductor performance, uh, and <clears throat> what we're able to do is use our tools with, with rigid soldering and have actually uh, the, the, the standard solder and keep the benefits of the standard soldering. So over here we have, uh, uh, for example, a, an image of soldering. And so this is a, an, an x-ray image, actually. And we're able to see that the quality of the bonds are excellent. We get the nice, uh, the nice scalloped attributes and indicates that the solder has reflowed. And uh, we, we have customers that we're working with on this, even at the, the early stage of the development. Uh, behind us on the video uh, is a partnership we're doing with the Hull Center in the Netherlands. And this is to implement roll-to-roll -roll technologies uh, to demonstrate the soldering application. So in this case, uh, we have uh, uh, the web coming through the tool and, and here's a soldering specific tool that's been built uh, and we're able to use this tool. This is just coming online over the last uh, few weeks at the Hull Center in, in Eindhoven. <clears throat> One of the key enablers for this continues to be our numerical simulation that we developed and continue to update. So this is a, 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 an actual application of the simulation here on the laptop, magnified on the large screen. 
we can see that this is a representative stack. Uh, it's user definable, so in this case we just applied uh, a five micron layer of silver on 100 microns of PET. We can toggle the, the mouse here and, uh, and see that as we move this, uh, as we move this screen, the, uh, the arrow, we can see in real time <clears throat> as we make the adjustments what the temperature profile is at the depth of the arrow. So this is a really helpful feature for our customers. <clears throat> One of the questions we get is how do we know that this is actually the temperature? Yes, this is based on, on thermophysical properties of the materials, but we also know that uh, this is actually the right temperature because we can benchmark it with new sensor and, and uh, temperature sensing uh, capabilities that we've developed to get the fast response time that's consistent with this kind of microsecond, uh, in this case, 500 microsecond pulse length. So part of what we're doing at Nova Centrix is not just developing the processing tools and the applications, but also user, to user aids so that our customers can understand how to use these tools, including Simpulse and including uh, uh, accessories such as this temperature sensor. We have some new filters uh, that are uh, able to be used as well. And when we think back to, the, to our, our fun spacesuit example, that's just one example of the kinds of inks that we have over here. So the kinds of inks applications. And so uh, at Nova Centrix, we're, we're making silver inks, we're making copper inks, uh, suitable for really any kind of uh, inkjet deposition. And in this case, we're even showing uh, rolls of material that we've, we've had uh, inkjetted using one of our roll-to-roll -roll tools. So let's come on down to the other side of the booth and look at our roll-to-roll -roll system. Ian is getting the final touches dialed in for a day at the show, but we've got a roll-to-roll -roll system here, inkjet heads, processing on a, a six inch roll of, of, uh, of, of paper material. We have an inspection station, and then here we have the, uh, the pulse forge tool. So in this case, it's a 1300, which is a high power variant that is useful particularly for high, uh, uh, high temperature gradients. It's overkill for silver ink on paper, but for some, some higher temperature materials, it's absolutely required. So is this one of your um, bigger machines? Yes. Or do you have even bigger than that? Uh, no, this is, this is the larger size of the integration uh, tools that we have. So, so our specialty is really the, the pulse forge unit. What we've done is work with partners uh, on the inkjet side to be able to develop our inks such that they match the capabilities of the inkjet heads and can deliver really consistent uh, performance. When you turn on the machine, it works. When you turn off the machine, it turns off. Simply said, but it, believe it or not, the, the, the embodiment of that is actually really tricky and hard to do. So this is really an impressive machine in this industry, right? And it is, what has it is. Been, what have you been mainly doing the last uh, few years? What's been the developments? So what we've been working on uh, uh, over the last couple of years is getting the reliability of this system uh, uh, really tuned. And we've learned a lot over the course of that time. We've learned about the need for material compatibilities. We've learned about how to drive the inkjet heads to be able to deliver the right amount of ink onto the substrate. We've learned about updated ink formulations that are able to be easily printable with the inkjet heads and then also have good adhesion to, uh, to arrange the substrates. So really what this represents is the, uh, uh, the system level integration where it's, it's the material, it's the, uh, the equipment, and it's the know-how all coming together. Any one of these uh, on its own is enough of a challenge, but to get a, a functional system that's integrated is, is really a challenge. And we're really excited to, uh, to be able to, to feature at our, at our uh, uh, space today, Paul Garrity from Nielsen. And Paul is uh, 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 a customer that we've been working with for a couple of years on this now. Yes, yeah. absolutely. So um, you have these, uh, so what are we looking at here? These are printed batteries. So these are, printed. yeah, so they're formed in um, four, four stages, anode cathode with an ink that's cured on the pulse forge. So, 
What kind of battery is this? How much power it comes through here? This is for IoT or uh, wearable devices. So it has a high output capability, but uh, low capacity. Uh, can you introduce yourself? So I'm Paul Garrity. I'm the CEO of Nielsen Energy. We, uh, we partner with, uh, with Novacentrix on the equipment side, on the ink side, and also on the product side. So here's your, your banner. It says uh, 40 milliamps, 1.5 volt, uh, disposable, 12, what is this? 12, 12 months, months durability. Durability. So shelf life. Um, how is, what kind of market is this for? It's for um, particularly for IoT devices. Uh, LoRa devices, Bluetooth, Wi-Fi devices. Um, it can also be applied in any any application where you need a very small form factor. And um, and this this is a radio that's built on the the Nova equipment. Radio. And it's a radio, a full full modem. What's the small chips here, and how do you? This get is them a there? this is a LoRa device, so this operates at 900 megahertz. And this is a printed antenna, and then the battery couples on the back to power the device. So, how is it to work with uh, Nova Centrix? Um, how much is possible to be achieved? What can you do? I mean, the 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 there are leading edge company equipment inks um, processes, and uh, we're working with them on fabricating this battery in uh, millions of units, basically. It's already in millions of units, or it's going to it's be? It's going to be. How soon? 2020. So a lot of things are happening this year. Is yeah. this flexible? It's flexible. You can cut it. It's completely safe, transportable. It's got all its uh, certifications for moving it around the world. Is it easy to swap for a new battery after 12 months? And it's a throwaway. Continue? It's meant for throwaway. Throwaway? And it goes in the uh, waste directly there's no no bad chemicals bad do you, do you have some other ideas for uh, killer apps uh, use cases that are going to be uh, good question so what right now we're working on um, disposable cold chain devices so for monitoring foods monitoring pharma um, these are devices that can go at a low cost inside the the, the food or the pharma and then it's throw away at the end Nice. That's really awesome. Uh, so maybe we can grab back the microphone, um, and here we can see it's just right here. Examples of radios. And um, so 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 this stuff uh, looks really awesome. Uh, basically, you're enabling some amazing stuff, right? So we have so many exciting customers. We're really pleased to be able to partner with Paul. Thank you, Paul. And uh, here at the at the conference in Santa Clara at ID Tech X. We're a partner with so many of the companies that are here at the trade show. This one? And uh, we can walk. We've been working with Volterra. Uh, we have some activities that are early stage with, with Bot Factory. As, as, we, as we go around, this is really uh, a, such a thriving ecosystem. And we come to this event, uh, this is a chance to work with technology partners. And, and then also, this is a chance to meet uh, with so many of our customers that can come here from Asia, that can come here throughout the Bay Area and, and really throughout the world. There's a, a pretty active uh, uh, a group of uh, folks from Europe that have come in for this event as well. And, uh, you know, here at the beginning of, of day one. Uh, it's not even started excited. yet. This no, is about are, to start soon. we are about to start. We see some people starting to, to filter in, but uh, we haven't seen the wave yet that's going to start when the uh, uh, when the gates when the gates officially open. So, um, how would you describe the the state of printer electronics and um, how how fast is it growing or you know? Sure. So, the there's I think that the the market now is increasingly starting to recognize the potential and opportunity of this kind of technology set. Uh, what this technology set is really able to do is to give product engineers, product marketers, brand managers options for increasing the performance of their products, either by adding, elec adding electronic functionality, sensors or uh, batteries or lighting that will enhance a user experience. Uh, packaging companies are continuing to, to look at opportunities to apply these technologies, as Paul mentioned, for cold chain, logistics tracking, quality management. 
one of the hindrances for packaging adoption has, has, has been that that's famously a, a very cost sensitive application. And so many of the companies in this space now and in the room today have really been working on dropping and reducing costs. And, and that in turn is opening up packaging applications. Uh, automotive is another emerging technology space, uh, application space that we're seeing. And uh, consistent with how uh, automakers are rethinking automotive interiors with uh, automated semi-autonomous driving and display technologies and rethinking about uh, what are passengers in the vehicle doing if they're not driving? Are they interacting with the vehicle? Are they interacting with uh, the environment? Are they interacting with each other? Are they interacting with people outside the vehicle? So we're seeing a lot of uh, emerging opportunities related to uh, activating different portions of the, the, the vehicle interior as well. Uh, and you've been uh, uh, exhibiting at the ID Tech Act shows for a few years. Yes, and our so, uh, I was I was trying to reflect on this uh, recently. I, I believe our first uh, exhibition here was in 2005. Maybe it was 2006. I think it was 2005. So it's been almost uh, 15 years now that we've been coming to to this conference, which is uh, uh, which is a long time. We've seen so much evolution initially in the early days. This conference had a few companies, very simple uh, 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 drape and, and and tables. And what we see now is is companies not just Novacentrix but others that are are building more uh, sophisticated. Uh, booth spaces because they have more content to convey. They're more mature as organizations, and they want to project that uh, that that kind of brand presence. And you all the way from the R and D part to pre R and D part to prototyping to mass production. Sure. So so many of the folks in here now have, are are involved in in uh, Innovacentrix as well in production applications of these technologies. And so uh, over the last five or six years now, increasingly different of these technologies have been adopted into applications, uh, different types of consumer electronics, uh, different types of wearable technologies have, have now uh, are now incorporating these these kinds of technologies. And we think that we're still on the, the upswing. So the, the space is far from mature, but we're also, uh, I would say, beyond the infancy. The technologies have been validated. Uh, uh, another key event for us coming up is uh, the Consumer Electronics Show in Las Vegas in January. Uh, a few of us are also exhibiting there. And what we're seeing with this is that this is a great convergence of the readiness of the technology space with awareness and receptiveness by uh, product companies that may not specifically be aware of what's happening in the, the, the printed and flexible uh, hybrid electronic space, but nonetheless are extremely receptive to these capabilities. And so we've exhibited there uh, uh, for the last three years now. This will be uh, this will be the fourth year to exhibit, and we're quite excited. Every year has 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 brought us uh, great contacts and business opportunities, and it's so exciting to feel that energy and that alignment with with uh, emerging customers. Because if you can get from uh, uh, this awesome future kind of tech kind of uh, space to day-to-day uh, -day consumer products and everything, then, you know, making that job. I mean, you are already starting well, that, that, that's but right. if it becomes like a, a in ever, everywhere. Well, that's, that's right. The, and the goal. of course, the customers themselves don't specifically care that what the technologies are. They're just looking for what these technologies can do for their products and to add real value in their market space. So increasingly what we're seeing is uh, companies in the printed and hybrid electronic space are not necessarily marketing themselves as printed and flexible hybrid electronics companies, but they're marketing themselves as an enabler for, for customers to get to more engagement and a more unique uh, customer experience for their, for their customers. And in as much as that requires uh, the use of these kinds of technologies, then that's fine because these technologies now have, 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 have been validated and are increasing uh, increasingly being validated even as they continue to evolve. And so I think the timing is, is really nice to continue to see strong growth in the space.